Every month I play a number of video games. These games range from new games that I've never played before to replaying games that I love or didn't like. And in today's video, I'll be talking about just some of the games that I played in February of 2023. Stars and Stripes. Hello and welcome to another Carrot Scraps video. And by another, I mean the 141st. So in today's video, similar to last month, I just wanted to go over some of the games that I played this month and some of the weird circumstances or interesting stories that I had uh, surrounding those games. Now, before we get into the video, I wanted to mention a couple of things up front, kind of give you a lore update on the channel. As you know, I've been working for Juniper Technologies for over a year now. Uh, but they cut my hours like crazy, and I've been trying to get them to give me more hours, and it just hasn't worked, so I had to look for employment uh, at other places. I'm still working at Juniper Technologies, I just couldn't continue working for them exclusively, uh, so I had to find uh, another job on the side, and I'm happy to say that after a long search, I finally found a new job at TPC, also known as Truck Phone Cinemas. That's right, I'm working at a movie theater, and it's gonna be a big change of pace for me, but either way, I still have my job at Juniper Technologies, but I feel a little bit more safe working at this new movie theater. And I started working for them in February, but in between starting that new job, I also had time to play some video games. So let's talk about the games that I played in February of 2023. So this month I started replaying Spider-Man PS4 or Marvel's Spider-Man or Insomniac Spider-Man. Um, and I just wanted to say, first of all, I really dislike that name that it's just called Spider-Man. Um, I dislike whenever anything is just called that plainly, unless it's like the first, you know, Spider-Man movie or the first Spider-Man video game. It, just don't call it just Spider-Man. Um, and I was talking to, uh, I believe my brother-in-law recently about like, oh, well, 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 what would you have called it if you were the one doing this? And I go, and I was like, at first I was like, ah, I guess I don't know. Um, uh, but then I was like, no, uh, I would have called it, you know, adjective Spider-Man. So I would have picked one adjective and then Spider-Man, uh, you know, that's the classic Spider-Man thing. Um, and when you think of a, a good adjective, I don't know, I, I would have gone for something new for a big video game like this. That's trying to kind of, you know, reinvent Spider-Man games or like, uh, you know, make a big uh, impression on the world of Spider-Man games and Spider-Man history. Um, I would have gone with a new adjective like uh, maybe the Marvelous Spider-Man. Um, that probably would be my choice, but, um, you know, Amazing would have been fine. I would have been happy with the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, with the Spectacular Spider-Man, anything. But putting that aside, um, I've been replaying the game, uh, mostly just because I wanted to, uh, but then it just so happened to work out that, like, it was nice having, uh, gameplay of the Scarlet Spider skin, which is gorgeous in this game. It's not accurate, right? Like, people always like to say that's accurate. Uh, it's definitely not, because it makes a lot of, you know, little changes, which I'm fine with, by the way. I think it's totally fine that they make those tiny little changes, but, um... Uh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous costume, um, and, uh, great gameplay for the Clone Saga videos that we do on the channel, um, but I was just replaying it in general, just because I, I wanted to take this game out for a spin again, and what an awesome game, it's just such a fun game, um, what a fun open world, uh, the web swinging is absolutely fantastic, um, and it only gets better when, you know, Miles Morales comes out the kind of sequel game, or I guess the... Uh, I mean, I would call it the sequel game, uh, the next game in this series. Um, but more than anything else, I would say that the um, the story and the characters are like the big highlight to this game for me. Um, I think Peter Parker in this game is pretty spot on for what I want from Peter Parker in Spider-Man media. Um, obviously, Peter Parker in the comics is my favorite, but when people ask me, like, oh, your favorite movie, Spider-Man, obviously, I mean, not obviously, but for me, I'm always going to say Toby. I really love Toby Maguire, but he's still not my perfect Peter Parker. Uh, what I'm thinking of, uh, of you know, perfect uh, or, or the best uh, movie Spider-Man, the first thing that comes to mind is this game, um, even though it's not a movie. Uh, I just don't have many notes for the Spider-Man in this game, for the Peter Parker in this game. I think they did a really good job with Peter here, and, uh, you know, it's kind of rare to see, for me anyway, to see a Peter Parker that's done so well. Um, I still prefer the original uh, facial uh, design 
uh, for Peter in this game versus the remaster design. I know a lot of people disagree with me on that, uh, but from a character perspective, I just think they did a fantastic job. Um, I, I really do think that this is the Peter Parker that I like and that I enjoy. Um, and, uh, you know, to that extent and from there, it's a Spider-Man that I really like and I really enjoy. Now, uh, going back with my history on this game, and I'm sure I'll talk about this again in the future, but for now, we'll talk about it again. Um, when this game was first announced, obviously I was excited because it was cool to have a new Spider-Man game, but I was kind of confused by the reception of it. Uh, I remember watching the trailer for the game and being like, oh, okay, well, that looks like fun. I'm excited. And then seeing people get so excited and I was like, why? Why are people so excited about this? And the reason I was confused was because seeing the gameplay reveal trailer, um, the game looked very similar uh, when it came to its combat and gameplay to the previous two uh, Spider-Man games, the Amazing Spider-Man uh, movie games, uh, which I had played and I had loved. Uh, I still love those games. I think those games are incredible. Uh, the thing is, I think many people did not play those games. Um, and so when this game came out, uh, I think the developer... Uh, Insomniac brought a lot of eyes onto it, and so a lot of people looked at it for the first time uh, in a way that they hadn't looked at previous Spider-Man games, and so I think that's where the uh, new attention came from. But to me, it kind of faded into the background because it looked so similar to the previous two games. And so I never disliked this game. In fact, I went to the midnight premiere of it, and I was super excited about it. Um, but it also never had like the biggest impact on me when it first came out. Um, the way that it seemed to on other people, where people are like, this is this is one of the best Spider-Man games ever made, or this is changing the game. I was like, you know, I, I like a lot of things about it, sure, but um, it just, it doesn't feel that different from previous Spider-Man games, and I still do feel that way. Uh, the previous two Spider-Man games uh, before this one, um, I still love, and I, I do think that this is a better game than those two, but I also don't think that this is like a huge leap from a gameplay perspective from the previous two uh, Spider-Man games. Um, I like the story in the previous two Spider-Man games to this one, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, I like the story of those two games, um, but I do think that the story is a step up in this one, uh, but from a gameplay perspective, I just don't think that the game gameplay is drastically different and I'm not saying that as an insult I'm saying that as just for me a matter of you know just fact for just in my opinion I'm not trying to saying that I'm not saying that's a fact just to me that's what I feel is that um you know this game is building off of what the previous two games did and those two games built off of what the previous games uh, uh Spider-Man games did you know what I mean um I, I, as somebody who's played most, if not all, of the Spider-Man games that I could uh, over the years, I've seen these games build on each other's shoulders, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I don't think that this game exists in a vacuum. So anyway, with that out of the way, uh, I never really uh, looked at this game as the you know, as this like saving grace for Spider-Man games. But that being said, uh, getting to play it again now and kind of returning to it, I feel like I'm giving it more credit than I did back in the day, right? Back in the day, I was like, oh, this is fun. This is good. This is a good time. Now I'm kind of replaying it and I'm like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a great game. You know what I mean? Again, not the best Spider-Man game in my opinion anyway, but still a great game um, and a fun game. And there's a lot that I really love about it. Um, and it's uh, exciting to play it again, and obviously, uh, if you haven't checked it out, I definitely think that you should. So Metroid Dread is a game that I played briefly when it first came out. I just didn't have the time to give it my full attention, sadly. But it was a game that I was very excited about. Um, I wanted to replay all of the Metroid games, or at least the, um, uh, not, not the Prime games. I wanted to replay the uh, kind of story games that led up to this one, um, the uh, 2D side-scrollers. Um, and I only got to replay the first game. And for me, that was a huge bummer. I was really excited to kind of replay the Metroid series, uh, but it was also really nice to replay the first game and to kind of readjust my opinions on it. Um, I would like to do a Metroid retrospective in the future, uh, but I think I would replay the first one again. Um, I played the first Metroid a lot as a kid on my uh, Game Boy Advance. I had a Game Boy Advance copy, um, and it's, uh, it's a game that's really stuck with me along with the Prime series. Uh, it's a game that's uh, a series that's really stuck with me, um, and I was really excited for Metroid Dread. Uh, one of the cool things about Metroid to me is that it's kind of this stealth uh, horror game. Um, the Even the original Metroid NES um, feels like a horror game in the music, uh, in its presentation, in the story. Um, 
And I, and I love that. I love that it's kind of this stealth secret uh, uh, horror game. As a horror fan uh, and as a fan of horror video games, it's nice to have a, a, a this series that doesn't necessarily scream to you that it's horror, but to me, it is. Um, and so Metroid Dread is... Uh, a, a great game for a number of reasons. First of all, because it kind of embraces that horror element and kind of almost feels like a survival horror game. And then on top of that, it also embraces the um, lore and it, and, it, and it embraces the story of Metroid outside of the Prime series, which I thought was really cool and kind of interesting and risky at the same time. Like there's a lot of story tackled in this uh, video game at the start of it uh, that hasn't been touched in a while and that a lot of people wouldn't be familiar with. And so I think it's kind of brave of them to just embrace that. Uh, you know, as a comic book fan, I always love when uh, uh, people stick to the lore and stick to these uh, stories, even if they're not necessarily the most popular or the most visited. Um, so starting this game and getting to see uh, what, story, what the story was going to be and what it was picking up after was really, really cool. Uh, but then actually getting into playing it um, and now playing it more, um, it really is, uh, for me, uh, embracing the horror elements a little bit more, um, especially with the Emmys, uh, which really do feel like, I mean, they feel like a, a, a pursuer enemy from a Resident Evil game. Uh, they chase you down in a way that's really interesting and compelling, um, and I have felt real stress playing this game in, in a way that's very fun. Um, when those Emmys track onto you, I think it's a combination of the way they pursue you and your ability um, to outrun them and the tools that you're given to do so. Um, you are very capable of outrunning these Emmys. You are very capable with the controls that you have to overcome the threat that they pose. But because of the way they pursue you, they cause you to get stressed out and to forget those tools or to not operate the the controls as well as you typically would be able to. And I think that's really fantastic survival horror, or at least really innovative survival horror, um, where you are, or just horror in, in a video game, where you have the tools to overcome this, you are capable of overcoming it, and so that's in the back of your mind, that you can fight this thing by surviving, um, but you need to be able to overcome the fear of the fact that this thing is coming at you uh, and, in, and intimidating you. And I, and I just, I don't know, I feel like the this aspect of the game is such a unique aspect of the game. It's such a part of the game that I haven't felt many times, uh, probably other than just, you know, occasionally in the Resident Evil remake games. Um, it really does scare me so much uh, when I'm just playing and I feel real stress when these creatures come toward me and I know that it's up to me to escape because I know how to play the game. Um, other than that, uh, the environments look gorgeous. Um, navigating these environments is fantastic. As usual, it makes me so happy to see a AAA, uh, you know, 2D or 2.5D side scroller. Uh, a platformer like this uh, gets so much attention is fantastic. Uh, it reminds me of Tropical Freeze and how uh, fantastic that game was. Um, I, I want more AAA games like this, especially from Nintendo, um, and I think they've done a really great job. Um, I haven't finished the game. Uh, I'm nowhere near finishing the game, but I've had a tremendous amount of fun playing. I'm excited to keep playing, um, and I'm excited to talk more about this game in the future, uh, especially on the channel. I've heard stories that this theater is haunted, uh, but that's not something that's particularly new to me. Um, TPC is truck phone cinemas. Uh, I guess they used to be truck movie cinemas, but they changed the name back in 2019 because they wanted to compete with uh, streaming on your phone. Um, I tried to explain that that doesn't make any sense um, going from, I mean, they, they're still showing movies and the, you know, the movie theater has nothing to do with phones, uh, but they didn't, it wasn't really up for discussion. Uh, it was just something that confused me. At this point, Ghost of Tsushima came out a couple of years ago, and yet I still keep returning to this game uh, pretty much every year. Uh, I feel like every year I've had a desire to return to Ghost of Tsushima uh, for one reason or another, and I just get sucked back into it. Um, I made a tweet recently where I was like, I think it's time for me to admit that like this is one of my favorite games. This isn't just a game I like, that this is, this is one of my favorite games. Um, I don't, it's not like I ever disliked Ghost of Tsushima, I feel like I've always just really enjoyed it. Um, and I remember 
uh, hearing people talk about it uh, after it came out. I, I I wasn't really on the hype train, and then I just heard people talking about it, and I was like, oh, I should I should check this out. I love samurai. I love uh, you know katanas. Um, I'm I'm big into those two things, and so typically speaking, if there's a new katana or samurai thing, I want to check it out, you know, for myself. And I did, and I enjoyed it. Um, but the thing is, like uh, Doom Eternal, when I played Doom Eternal, I was like, this is one of the best games I've ever played. I know this uh, now. Um, but I'm gonna wait a year until I declare it, just to make sure that it's not just, you know, the hype, uh, getting to me. Um, and for some reason I just haven't had that with Chishima, even though I've always enjoyed it. Even though I've, I, w I liked it, and I, you know, before I played it I thought I would like it, after I played it I thought it was incredible. Um, and I don't know, I just think that's interesting. So I think it's finally time to admit, you know, with the amount of times I've come back to it and replayed it, uh, that it's one of my favorite games. Um, I just love this game. Um, I like open world games in general. Um, I enjoy uh, uh, map games, right, where they, you know, give you this big, beautiful open world and you get to explore and uh, do what you want and take on different tasks. Uh, but there's something about this game in particular that I think is done really well. One of my favorite things about this game is the stance system. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like people... Uh, often compare this game to Assassin's Creed and excuse me if I talk about Assassin's Creed and I don't know what I'm talking about I've played Assassin's Creed before I'm not the biggest fan of it um, so I, I could be ignorant here but to me the stance system in this game uh, adds just so much more depth to the combat um, it, you know you can obviously go through and stealth kill people um, and you can go through and use uh, you know ghost abilities um, but you also have so many different like ghost abilities and you also have so many different sword stances that you can use um, that add a lot to how you approach combat scenarios um, and then in general when you have a group of you know eight people approach you um, it, it, it's so much, in, in a way that reminds me of Doom Eternal, there's so much for you to think about in terms of, you know, do you want to struggle with the stance that you're using, or do you want to master your sword styles and really overcome the challenge that's ahead of you? Um, to me, that's something that makes this game distinct from other open world map games. Even games that, um, you know, that I love, like the Far Cry games. I really enjoy the Far Cry games, even though they're just, you know, uh, here's the map, take this gun, and go explore, um, I feel like there's more complexity to the gameplay in this game. Um, and then on top of that, when you put aside the gameplay, like the combat, um, there's also just the way you explore the world. Uh, it feels like there's a lot more, e e e there's a lot more, um, I don't know, uh, effort put into the beauty of it. Um, there, there's a there's an effort to make these encounters meaningful and interesting um, or they feel purposeful they don't feel like tasks to fill up your screen which I feel like a lot of other map games are um, when it comes to giving you tasks in other map open world games uh, it feels like they're just kind of being like you know oh these are your you know different this type of mission this is your uh, different that type of mission and that's not necessarily a bad thing right like i like that part of those games you know having things to do and is, is an important part of those map games but in tsushima it feels like uh you know the haikus and the um you know the 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 sword mini games and uh, discovering these, you know, little locations by following the birds or following the foxes. It just feels like it adds to the experience uh, rather than just giving you something to do. It, it doesn't feel like just many, meaningless busy work. It really feels special to find something uh, that is not, you know, part of the main quest. And it really feels like it's adding to this uh, experience um, that these developers are trying to, uh, uh, you know, create. Um, and I don't know, I just think they're really nice. Uh, and, and then in the end, when it comes to everything with Ghost of Tsushima, uh, it's hard for me to find many criticisms. Um, you know, the, the acting is fantastic, the writing is fantastic, the characters are fantastic, uh, the story is fantastic, the gameplay is fantastic, the game looks beautiful. Uh, it, it's just hard to find things to uh, you know, dislike or to criticize. If I did have to find something to criticize, um, it would be that even though I do like a lot of this game and I think there's some really uh, fantastic stuff when it comes to um, 
you know, the rhythm and the combat, I do think that sometimes it gets a little uh, repetitive and, and it can discourage me from playing for long periods of time. Um, and I, I say that very lightly. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that the game is repetitive, just that every now and again, um, it can feel a little bit like, okay, I need a break from Tishima. Um, you know, I've, I've done enough uh, riding from here to there and, uh, and sword fighting. Um, but again, I, I can't stress enough uh, uh, that that's not as uh, hard a criticism as... I, I think it sounds like I, I think that there is enough added to combat that makes combat encounters feel unique. And I think there are enough different types of encounters um, to really make each sitting uh, fun and interesting. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I've been playing this game again and I love it. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite games. I don't know. Uh, I feel like my relationship with this game is going to change further as time goes on. Uh, but if you haven't played this game, go check it out, especially if you're into Japanese culture, especially if you're into uh, samurai in any way or, uh, you know, katanas and swords in any way. Uh, it is an incredible game uh, with a lot of love and affection put into it. Um, and I haven't even played Legends yet. I've only played the main game. And yet there's this whole other part of this game that has all this love and care put into it that I've never even tried and that I definitely want to try in the future. So... Uh, you know, if this is how I feel about just the main game, uh, you know, there's so much more content out there. So play Tsushima if you haven't yet. I can't recommend it enough. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. If for some reason you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel for more. As regular viewers know, I make a variety of content on my channel and I'm always going to make the videos that I want to make. But if you see something you enjoy, make sure to let me know and I'll try to prioritize that kind of content in the future. Over on Twitch, I typically play superhero games like Marvel's Avengers, Marvel Snap, and the occasional horror game like Resident Evil. So if that sounds interesting to you at all, make sure to check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash carrot scraps. And all my other social media media, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram are at Carrot Scraps as well. So I want to thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. In case you're wondering or you're just uncultured, yes, that is Elvira behind me. Uh, unfortunately, she is massive, so we can't see her head. Um, it's unfortunate because that's, I don't know, just be, it, she has a very recognizable head.